Hey, good morning, good evening, good night. Welcome to another episode of First Light, where basically every week uh, for over a hundred times, people join me for half an hour to see if I'm going to fall asleep. And uh, yeah, so far I haven't done it. And uh, let's be honest, it's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like NASCAR. You know, like no one no one really goes to NASCAR to follow a car going around right like it's even cats with like a ball <laughs> they, they don't even last half an hour you know but yeah we go for the crash so i appreciate everybody joining me every week waiting for the crash um hasn't happened yet. but anyways which i guess is kind of odd calling it the breakdown and the blessing it's not referring to that but anyways i want to welcome you snoop doug and uh look at liz you as well great having you on with us this morning and there giving us the cue that uh, we love doing this. Doesn't matter when you join us, uh, whether you are a part of the crew that joins us at 6.30 in the morning, <clears throat> or if you just come at another time, just say hi in the comment section. That way we are, I, I go back and uh, look at the comments and try to uh, inter, um, interact with people uh, later on uh, on that. Good morning, Linda. Uh, so it's great having you on here this morning. Uh, yeah, we are going into this uh the series of, of romans which is really cool i i um i almost started like super late i was kind of just going over my notes and getting excited again about just kind of looking at what we were going to talk about today because we're going to deal with one of the biggies um <clears throat> one of the big verses that uh is shared uh many times and, and maybe you've you've heard it but uh at the same time i i want to challenge you to say that uh uh, I'm, I'm, well, you know, you know me. Uh, chances are I'm not really going to address it the same way that other people may have uh, looked at it. But anyways, uh, good morning, Richard. You as well. Uh, it's great having you. You know what? If, if you, oh, you know what? I was going to do this earlier, but if you, uh, oh, ho, ho, good morning. Get, great. <laughs> great having you here, Brandy. Um, but we're, uh, if you, I'm going to give you a bit of time. Uh, if you kind of followed me in um, uh, social media and stuff, you may know my mug. You may know my mug this morning. Good morning, Chuck. Great having you this morning. And uh, yeah, like you may know, so you're gonna have to see. Uh, throw it in there if you think you know what the mug is, but uh, I'll, I'll give you like another half a minute or so and see if you wanna throw that in there. But yeah, so I, I, it's been exciting to uh, just kinda move forward and we're moving forward with uh, great things. I'm telling you, it was awesome just uh, for those of you who are, you know, with us on Sundays as well, um, we had that newcomer lunch. We could not have put another table in there. It was just amazing to just sit with so many new people that are coming to uh, First Half and uh, and to look at them, get chatting with them. And and here's the thing that I was really impressed with is that there's there's been people that have been coming, but some of those people I've already seen. I see them already involved in ministry here at the church. I, I just thought that was really cool uh, to see that they're already getting grafted into the stuff that's happening here. Okay, well, anyways, I don't see it yet. But uh, anyways, yes, uh, da, 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 a first, a first, I finally got to Victoria and uh, which for everybody uh, <laughs> that's yes Justin the retirement mug uh, the sequel actually that would mean that it would be two it would be a two C a uh, two piece set but anyways um, yeah so uh, good morning Jerry as well uh, but yeah like I uh, finally got to see Victoria beautiful city uh, for everybody in Ontario uh, who calls it uh, Victoria Island no it is Vancouver Island um, they just kind of uh, everybody gets a Vancouver apparently out here it's it's used everywhere so anyways okay well you know what we we uh, are have uh, got a lot to talk about and um, and not crash okay so that's awesome all right well, let's take a moment let's pray and then um, we'll just join in so oh look at that uh, a Montreal one of course yeah <laughs> right exactly Chrissy Montreal um, I don't know if I have a Montreal one I'd have to check but anyways I'll have to get one soon all right well let's take a moment let's pray so God I want to thank you for this day Thank you that we can be uh, on this journey together, working through your uh, love letter to us, Lord, and found through uh, the writing of Paul to Romans. So God, just be with us today. Help us to not only understand what Paul was saying, but then understand what you're saying as well and how it speaks to our lives. We ask this in your name. Amen. All right. Well, cheers to Victoria. Oh, first sip of the day. Whew. 
Woo! <laughs> That's right, Chrissy sounds like a plan. So, anyways, so uh, we're, we're going through this. We want to welcome everybody who's joining our podcast as well, our, our Seek First podcast, and uh, you're joining a live interaction with people uh, online as we're walking through the book of Romans. And so just as a recap, Paul's writing this letter to a church in Rome that he hasn't been to yet. So it's all these Christians that are in Rome. And good morning, Dina. And uh, and so we want to, uh, what's Paul doing is he's trying to help Jews and non-Jews or Gentiles as they're called, uh, figure it out because they have different beliefs. They have different understandings of what Jesus did uh, because they come from different perspectives and different cultures. And I also want to give a big shout out. Uh, I, I met some people that um, uh, they watch this uh, every week as a Bible study. And so you know who you are, but I want to just say hi to you guys and, uh, and thank you for um, making this part of your discipleship uh, track. And so uh, that's great. Okay. Well, anyways, so last week, just in case you didn't see them, um, you need to drink tea. Uh, okay, that, okay, Jerry. Uh, how can I block Jerry? Okay, anyways, okay, so, um, all right, so we have, uh, the, last week we were talking about the, the fact that uh, how we act uh, does not affect who God is himself, right? Uh, secondly, um, doing good. How do we do good? We do it by not doing evil. Okay, that's that's how we do good. So it's not about I live a good life. No, you live a not evil life is how you you really look at that. And then lastly, we fear God not out of a fear like being afraid, but we fear Him by fear wrecking the relationship with Him. Okay, but anyways, you can go and look at last week's episode or listen to it, and then you can do that. Okay, we're jumping to verse nineteen of chapter three. Here we go. Okay, now we know what. Uh, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are subject to the law, so that every mouth may be shut, and the whole world may become subject to God's judgment. Wow, this is a great verse to start with. For no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law, because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. Okay, so basically, it's just kind of a repeat of what I've just kind of shared earlier. It's not what you do, okay? It's who you know, okay? It's, you know, I, I got a guy, okay? I got a guy, right? It's that sort of mentality, and I thank God that we all have a guy. And, uh, and so that's Jesus, and that's basically what he's saying here. Okay, verse 21 goes on to say this. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been revealed, attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ. I love that. The righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, since there is no distinction. Okay, so so what Paul's saying here is that we are made right through our faith in in Jesus Christ. That's how we are made right, okay? So not believing in Jesus Christ. Okay, I want to be clear. It's not about believing in Jesus Christ because that's like believing in his existence. Like, did he live? Did he live a life? Did he get crucified? Like, that's sort of thing. Did he, did he spend time on earth? Was there really a Jesus Christ? It's not about believing in Jesus Christ, okay? It's about believing in the work of Jesus Christ. It's about believing what he did actually accomplished what he did and why he did it okay that is so important too. what is accomplished that the sins are being removed and forgiven good morning jim look at this i've thrown out the emojis first thing that's great i love it so what he did that's what we are uh, to believe in the work that he did okay and here we go big verse says get ready for it Verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Now, I, I'm going to read it again, but I just want to say this. I had to be very careful because there's a part of, of 23 that I really want to talk about, but I just know that I need to use it on a Sunday sometime. But anyways, okay. So verse 23 and 24 is the reason. 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Okay, I purposely put both of these verses together now. Chances are you have memorized or know the verse 23, okay? We stop and we memorize 23, but we don't understand its significance with the second verse, okay? We don't get it in the perspective of really what Paul is getting at here. He's saying this. He's saying that we all have sinned, okay? We've all sinned and fall short, okay? What is it? Okay, we all have sinned. That is is the breakdown okay that's what brings up we have all broken the relationship with god but we've also been re justified through the redemption of christ okay that is the blessing so yes there is a breakdown but we don't stay just in the first act we let the second act unfold we have the we have the breakdown and we also have the blessing, okay? And understand that what I'm getting at here is, it's, it's kind of like when you have like a, a hundred mile, a hundred dollar rebate. Um, uh, if you buy something, and I, I've, I've done this, throw it in the chat room if you've done the same thing. You know, you buy something, oh my goodness, that's awesome. You know, you buy it and they throw in a hundred dollar or whatever amount, a mail-in rebate, okay? So that's awesome. And, uh, and then you, forget where you put it or you just lose it or you just forget altogether that you even got it, right? How many people have been guilty of that, right? So you've got it available to you, but have you redeemed it? <laughs> so, have, so, so you have this, we've all broken down, but what Paul's saying is that there is this mail-in rebate that all you have to do is mail it in. All you need to do is believe in the work of what Christ did, okay? And so if we don't send it in, we will never receive the blessing, okay? Hmm. Oh, okay, exciting. Okay, let's keep going. Ah, uh, I'm going to see if I can power through this thing. Okay, verse 25 says this. God presented him, meaning Jesus, as the mercy seat, interesting, he uses this Jewish term. So God presented him as the mercy seat by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his restraint, what? Because in his restraint, God passed over the sins of previously committed you catch that ah I, I, you can't have my canadian tire money i know i know and i'm telling you that triangle app it doesn't nearly give you as much money back okay we're gonna leave that one alone but did you catch this year god passes over sin as a restraint it's a restraint it's, Paul is sharing with both the Jews and the Gentiles, and dare I say, the Chilliwackians or whoever, wherever you are listening to this right now. He's singing that God goes against his own nature. He has an inclination to judge. His nature, I should say, part of his nature is to judge sin. So he goes against it by showing the mercy of God. The mercy seat, the mercy of God is him holding back, restraining, like holding it, what he normally would do, which is to judge sin. That's what the mercy seat is. Now, the mercy seat is referred to it's in the Old Testament. You can read it. Um, Exodus, I believe it is. And in there, that basically it was this covering over the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, so the Ark of the Covenant housed the presence of God physically at that time before Christ. And so it was covered. So it couldn't, it was covered over. And, and so not the entire presence of God, that's a theology 
wackadoo thing. But it was it was this this the idea was that the mercy seat sat on top of the Ark of the Covenant, and there the blood. Okay, it was like over covered over and so there's a yeah there was a it was gold there was these two big cherubim angels kind of facing each other like their hands kind of their wings kind of uh facing each other you could google pictures of it and stuff not what it really is because we don't know where it is anymore but it doesn't matter that's the thing it doesn't matter here and so the blood of the sacrifice from the high priest was sprinkled on it okay so that's what it was so basically it was this covering uh, to keep the uh between the the divine basically and humanity for our concept and so that's what the mercy of god is is he's holding back what would happen if we came into his presence we could not survive that at all okay verse 26 goes on to say this so god presented him to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that we or so sorry so that he could or would be just and justify the one who has faith in Jesus this is important that he would be that he would be just remember what I just said he's restraining what he wants to do so what did he do in order to still be just and still justify the one who has faith in Jesus Christ, okay, is that God presented, it says he presented Jesus. You know, we, we say, oh, you know, you know, at Christmas time, you know, God, you know, so of the world that he gave his only son. He gave, meaning he presented Jesus, okay, to demonstrate righteousness, to show us, and then to use that example as now what we, as we have faith in his work, are now pulled into right standing. I know, it's like, wow, it's really early in the morning. But that's what happens. We get pulled into that right standing because we cling, basically, to the to the righteousness of Christ who actually did it, who did exactly what God has always wanted humanity to do. But we blew it, okay? That's the idea. So his sacrifice, okay, on the mercy seat, sprinkled by the high priest, okay, as an act of recognizing our atonement, okay? It's, it's not that we go, we sprinkle the blood on, oh, we're atoned. No, we're recognizing that it was death that needed to give us life. It was a payment for sin, okay? On behalf of all of Israel, it was the high priest. But now we look at it as, as a payment from sin or, or for sin from, from Christ for all time because he actually pulled it off, okay? So our faith, our faith is released by surrendering to the one who made the perfect payment for our own personal sin, okay? So his perfect payment covers over our personal sin, removes it actually. We'll talk about that later. but. Here that we see that by, and this is kind of like jumping into Hebrew stuff. You can read that on your own. But that by Jesus being our high priest, he is our high priest. So he steps in, but he doesn't use the blood of some, you know, Baba black sheep, or, or I guess it wouldn't be a black sheep. It'd be a perfectly white sheep. Read Leviticus or Exodus on that. But the idea here is that it is this, it's his blood his perfect blood that is sprinkled, is covered over. And, and that is what gives us the atonement. Okay, this perfect and right sacrifice. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's move on to verse 27. It says this, where then is boasting? Think of it. Paul's saying, uh, you got nothing, Jack. Like, this ain't you. You didn't do anything. So like, you know, ooh, look at me, hallelujah me. No, 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 no. So where then is boasting? It is excluded by what kind of law? By one of works? No. On the contrary, by a law of faith. It says, basically, it's Craig McKibben version. Um, there's no point boasting in something you didn't do. Okay? You did nothing. There's no point in boasting about this. It's Jesus' sacrifice on the mercy seat. Not ours, which is 
actually deserve. It actually should be our blood on that mercy seat, okay? Because we don't deserve it. And so that's what's so beautiful about this idea of what Christ did for us. Okay, verse 28 says this. For we conclude, oh, he's at the end. No, 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 we got like 13 more chapters. For we conclude that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Oh, I can't wait for chapter four. Um, is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of the Jews only? I bet all the Jews are like, yes, he is. Okay. Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? Now you got the whole other group. Yes, he is. Okay. Yes, the Gentiles too. Since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith, and the uncircumcised through faith, okay? Let me just tell you that at like 6.48 in the morning, I've never wanted to tell you more that prepositions matter in this chapter, or in this verse. It says, yes, of Gentiles too, since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith, okay? This is huge, okay? This is huge that Paul again saying that God is the God of the Jews and the non-Jews, okay? Circumcised by faith are the Jews. Circumcised through faith are the Gentiles, okay? So this is the key. This is what I want to say. That Jews, in the context of what um, uh, Christ um, has done, that Jews fulfill their right to the kingdom of God by their personal decision to surrender their ancestral claims that as Jews to instead place their faith in Jesus to be the fulfillment of the law's requirements for them. Let me say that again because I know it's early in the morning, but it's really deep. That the Jews fulfill their right to the kingdom of God how do they get into the kingdom of God? By their personal decision to surrender their ancestral claims as Jews. So they have to kind of say, okay, being perfect in the law isn't what has to transpire only. Okay, so they're, they're surrendering, not their Jewish heritage, but their ancestral claims of what the law needs to do. As Jews to instead place their faith in Jesus to be the fulfillment of the law's requirements for them. So think of it. Think of Messianic Jews today. Think of people who have like come to faith in Christ after being a Jew for such a long time. You've got to give it up. You've got to say, okay, it's not up to me anymore. Someone else actually did it for me. In a, in a religion that was all based on the what you did Man, that's tough to do, okay? But, but, catch this. The non-Jews, Gentiles, us, anybody else who's not a Jew, are grafted, or another way of saying it is adopted. They're adopted into the kingdom of God through, not by, but through their personal decision to place their faith in Jesus, having provided a new way to come to the Father. Adonai, Elohim, Melech, Holam. Okay? Lord, our God, King of the universe. Like, that's, that's what, think of it. Like, oh boy, it's just like, you've got these group, you've got this, uh, can't believe, you got a group of, these two groups of people. One group struggling because their whole sense of identity is in living a perfect life and they themselves have to do it. And they have to relinquish that and say, somebody else did it for me. And my whole life I was told it was just gonna be based on what I did. And somebody else did it. That's hard to do. But everybody else who don't get the chance 
They, they, the only way they can do it is if they get circumcised, if they give up everything that they've had and join in and probably at best be sloppy seconds of just like, well, I'm not a real Jew. I'm just chosen to become a Jew. I don't, I'm not one of the 12 tribes. And they're in this and always feeling like they're distanced. And God grafts them in grafts them in and adopts them and says, you're mine. Wow. Is it like, it's so powerful what, what Paul's saying in here, that, that this is what's happened is that by, by faith, these Jews are coming in. And through faith, these non-Jews are coming in. Ugh. It's just, it's so exciting. I, I'm going to just keep going because I just, okay, okay. Verse 31 says, do we then nullify the law through faith? Absolutely not. Okay, Chuck did a big, ex like Chuck uh, Block, we were talking, he, he did like more study on this, and it's like basically Paul saying, heck no, okay, like he's, he's saying this, <laughs> whatever, but that's, that's kind of the intensity that Paul is using. So, so do we then nullify the law through faith? He's saying, does the law no matter, not matter anymore? And he's like, heck, no, stop. No, that's not it. Absolutely not. On the contrary, we uphold the law. Paul is saying that this isn't proof the law doesn't matter. It's proof that Jesus' perfect and sinless life was based on the principles and teachings of the law that we must then aim to follow. So, Jesus fulfilled the law, but he did so to show us the law, to show us how we can keep going and living in him. Okay? All right. You know, I'm, I'm going to see if I can keep moving here. Okay. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm actually past where I want to be. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. Chapter four. Woo, yay. We made it. Okay. Pa into chapter four. Okay. This is good. I said I wanted to get into it. That's good. Okay. What then will we say that Adam, our forefather, according to the flesh, has found? If Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him for righteousness. What? Are you kidding me? It was credited for him or to him for righteousness. Did Abraham sin? Yep. He deceived leaders about his wife saying, oh, it's my half sister. And also he did it twice because he didn't figure it out the first time. Okay. And there, therefore, using Paul's logic, okay, three verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, that he fell short of God's glory. He sinned. So, therefore, Abraham's works could not be justified. What he did could not be justified. But, but, big, but, behold the truth. But, he believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. Okay? I'm telling you, believing in, in, believing in, I feel like that, you've seen the video, in the beginning, okay, anyways, you have to watch that on your own, okay, but believing in God means this, you don't believe in yourself, believing in God means you don't believe in yourself, well, okay, not meaning that you don't actually believe in yourself, okay, it's not like, you know, like, you're just, again, like, the ascetic kind of whipping yourself, and, oh, I'm so horrible, and that, no, 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 that's not what I'm getting at, okay, but basically what it is, is when you believe in God and not believe in yourself, you're asking, where does the buck stop? Where does it stop? Okay. Who has the final say? That's what is basically happening here is that he's saying that Abraham believed it wasn't up to him. It ultimately was up to God. Okay. So to give you an example. If an employee, okay, doesn't, um, 
uh, if an employee works for somebody, and I've seen these sort of situations, where uh, an employee feels that the boss should not be the one to make the final decisions, okay? No, I don't think the boss should make the final decisions. I think that, you know, we should all kind of work on this decision together or whatever it is. Um, so, so what happens to that employee? Bam! They get fired, right? They get fired after time because it's like, no, like you just do what I tell you, okay? Because I'm the boss, okay? So this is what is happening because why is he getting fired? Because he's rebellious and unwilling to follow the rules, okay? He is not willing to do what the boss says. The boss lays out the rules or the law the boss lays it out, and then it's up to the employee to decide whether or not they are going to do it here. And the same thing, whether we like it or not, is with the kingdom of God. So our belief in God is basically saying, because of what Jesus did on the cross, God, you're the boss. Oh, boy. Wow, that wasn't even meant to rhyme, okay? But, but what you did on the cross, Jesus, then we now recognize that, God, you're the boss. And then if you're the boss, then it just means that we have to listen to what you want us to do. And that's what our faith in Christ is. And you say, well, that's, that's um, um, it's kind of uh, sickening because uh, then you don't get to live your life. Well, this is what he's saying. It's, it's not your life to live. It's, it's not when you understand what, what is being afforded to you, that, that you're able to, whether you're a Jew and you can come by faith and come into the kingdom of God or if you're a non-Jew, and through faith, you get adopted into his kingdom. It's like the, the dream job that you've like, wow, this is the great thing. It's got all the perks you want. But if you want to say, no, I want to do things on my own, okay, but you're going to fail. One minute warning. Thank you, Justin. I see it on the screen. But I, that's, I, I'm ending on this point here. So my question to you is, today, the first step I want you to take is, is ask yourself, Am I letting you be the boss, God? Am I letting you be the boss? Can I relinquish it to you and trust you, God, that you will take, that you will take care of this situation? Because I'm telling you, when we finally give, give in to him and give it to him, then that's when God says, okay, let's get this thing going. So anyways, here we are, seven bells. What a great morning, and uh, thank you. No crash and burn, a little bit of emotion, but that's okay. And I can't wait to be with you either on Sundays or next Thursday as we continue on in chapter four of Romans. Until then, God bless you, and just go in peace in what God has called you to do.